here to tell you about a project that I've been working on, uh, a project that is about conversation, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, face to face conversation. Uh, and it comes out of my personal experience uh, entering recovery uh, from addiction to alcohol. Uh, and I want to tell you a little bit how uh, it started uh, and the different iterations that it's embodied. And then I would like to invite uh, one of you uh, from the audience to participate uh, in a conversation with me. So the origins of the project came, like I said, out of my own personal experience in recovery. And, and before I went into recovery, the first thing I did was stop drinking alcohol, uh, which is good, uh, but not the best thing. Because when you just stop, you don't get the help that you need. Uh, and I stopped and started drinking ice water because I wasn't drinking alcohol. And I thought everybody in the world should drink lots of ice water. Uh, so I put out uh, ice water stands outside of my studio late at night, and I would tell people getting out of the bars that they should drink ice water, uh, which doesn't work. And it didn't work for me, because I certainly uh, relapsed after that. Um, but it is something that continues with the project. So this is uh, from an exhibition that I had in New York. The gallery, Mixed Greens Gallery, agreed during the, their, during the exhibition to um, put out ice water on, on days that were above 90 degrees. Uh, and um, when you think about it, if you were to walk by a station like this or as you were walking in, how many of you got water from that container? Oh, a few of you did. If you saw it on the street, would you? Probably not, right? Well, you, you might if you were hot and if you were thirsty, but you don't know what's in it, right? What is that? It says water, it says free. So the basic premise of it is I set up a table and chairs uh, like we have here, and I invite people to join me in conversation or talk to each other in conversation. Uh, so sometimes it takes place in an art gallery uh, and sometimes it takes place uh, in, the, in a barber shop. Uh, this, is my, uh, this is my barber, uh, Tim Neville. He is, I think he moonlights as a cop or vice versa. He's a very good cop and a very good barber. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I'm talking to people in an art gallery and artists, and other times I'm talking to normal, everyday people. Um, I also like to take the table and chairs and put them out on the street by the water containers. So uh, I, like to, I like to think of my work as um, a place where you can become an accidental participant in a conceptual art project. Uh, so this is Michelle, uh, Michelle Dempster. Uh, I think I was getting my hair cut by Tim from the previous slide. And when I came back to the table and chairs, Michelle was sitting there reading a book, waiting for a friend, not knowing that she was uh, about to participate uh, in in a conceptual art project and become herself uh, a conceptual artist. It's, it's something that I've done uh, going across the country uh, in multiple states, uh, in New York, in Ohio, in Iowa, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, basically around the country uh, where I'm driving around bringing my table and chairs and wares. Uh, it's something that has taken place on a 16-passenger bicycle. So this is a, uh, uh, during the bike race, I hosted with 1708 Gallery an alternative bicycle race or ride. Uh, and a number of about 16 or 17 people joined me. It was the night of this uh, ride on the cobblestones. And we took an alternative route around uh, Richmond. And um, what we did is we converted this pub bicycle into a water wagon. And if, has anybody here seen the gangs of New York? Well, if, you, if you've seen the Gangs of New York, uh, the neighborhood that the Gangs of New York takes place in is Five Points. And in the 1860s and 1870s, the Moderation Society of New York would roll wagons filled with ice water and ask people to pledge to drink only water instead of alcohol. So that's where the term 
on the wagon and off the wagon comes from. Uh, pledges to not drink alcohol do not work, just so you know. Um, so, like I said, this is a project that came out of my own personal experience in recovery. Uh, and um, one thing I learned in recovery, so recovery doesn't mean that you no longer drink or use drugs. It means that you come to peace with uh, where you are uh, and you engage in face-to-face -face regular conversation with other people uh, that share the problem uh, that you have. Um, so in, in, in that experience of, of meeting multiple people who were in similar circumstances to me, I relearned the idea and the concept of empathy. And I slowed down. You know, I'm, I'm an early adopter with technology. I have cell phones and watches and computers, and I'm constantly on the go through social media and so on and so forth. And it was my experience in recovery that led me to slow down and really think about uh, what it means to be face to face with somebody and in conversation. Um, so um, I've had a number of conversations with strangers uh, and friends and family. Uh, this is a photograph of my father that I took a year ago. Uh, and it is, I went down to visit him to um, when he was, had some health issues. And we had a conversation with all my family about the end of life decisions that we would have to make uh, in the near to immediate future. Uh, when I had my show in New York, Angela Shaw came, and she came to celebrate uh, the life of a, a, a friend of hers who had passed a year before. Um, and this is a segue into, we have, we have about, I'm at 10 minutes here, and what I would like to do is invite somebody from the audience to participate in a conversation with me on this stage. Come on up. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? AJ. AJ, John Fryer. Nice to meet you. Very nice to yeah. meet you. Have a seat. So yeah, well, I will have a seat. <laughs> so this is, uh, here's how we're going to get started here. This okay. is ice mm -hmm. and some water. OK. And I want to have you fill that up with water right okay. up there. Yeah? All the way to the top. So AJ, yes, sir. What brought you here today, uh, and, and not just because you were invited, but what brought you to be here now in this world and in this place? Um, well, for starters, to be here, my friend Gabby, she, well, I watch TED a lot, but she found yeah. out that VCU was having it, so she said, "Why don't we go together?" I'm like, "Why not?" You know, great, kind of a good experience uh, great. to do this. She did the first little stand-up volunteer, so I thought I need a matcher. Great. And, and, and uh, so why do you feel that way? What leads you, AJ, to be the person that would stand up and come and, and have the confidence to stand in, a bunch of, stand in front of a bunch of people and, and, and talk to, to someone about serious issues? Um, wow, great question. Uh, I like, I guess I like being the center of attention, not like, hey, it's me, but I like doing things that a lot of people might not feel comfortable doing. Uh -huh. uh, doing this is a learning experience for me. Sure. I'm not standing out all the time, but if I yeah. do this, I can feel comfortable standing out maybe in something that's basic. Can you point to an experience in your life uh, that brought you to VCU? Um, or that, you know, yeah. Being close to home, I think. I needed to be close to my mom. Yeah. I wasn't close to her in high school, maybe. So yeah. I feel like this would be a time where I can learn to be myself, but also fall back on her. Yeah. Because I feel like I need her in a sense. Do you talk to your mom a lot? Every day. Yeah. yeah. Do you talk on the phone? When, you, when, when was the last time you, you spoke to your mom face to face? Last night. I went home and uh, got a book for a class, philosophy yeah. class. Do you, when you talk to her, do you, 
Does she have her cell phone app? Uh, rarely, never. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you have your cell phone app? Try not to when yeah. I'm talking to her. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we've become a a, a a people that are constantly elsewhere. Right. Yeah. We're, and that's me too. I'm I'm constantly in another place. And and one thing that my experience in recovery and and part of this project has been about is being with one person mm -hmm. and giving them the respect and time that they need to uh, experience conversation and experience empathy uh, and you know experience trust as you build it when you talk to somebody. I feel like that's cool because it's like we're doing that now with everybody watching us, but it's like me and you. Uh, yeah, they're time. not. They're not here. Yeah, it's just me and you right now. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you want me to know about you? Um, what's, what's your story? Why? Yeah, again, why are you here? You know, uh, I, you know, 2013, I was either going to be here or dead. Yeah. Uh, you know, me here at VCU, just first person in my family to go to college. So I feel like being close to home, that's probably why I was close to home. I'm the first person that's doing something out of the norm in my family. Nobody's gone to college. So fall back on them because this is new to me as well as new to my, my peoples, my mom, my dad. Uh, being here. It's always a good opportunity to learn something. I yeah. feel like I'm learning now. I can come up here in front of everybody and talk about yeah. something that they probably wouldn't have known if I sat in the back and listened to somebody else yeah. talk about it. Yeah. And I think it's cool. I'm learning to be more outgoing. Great. Different person. Great. Yeah. Um, what else should we know about you? Uh, what makes you special? What makes me special? Uh, I think I'm a character. My yeah. mom calls me a character a lot. Yeah. I, jo I joke a lot. Yeah. Um, basic, I like doing basketball. Uh, I'm becoming, I'm starting to enjoy philosophy. Uh -huh. uh, first time taking it this semester, but reading it and understanding that uh, there's a lot that I can learn from fundamentals in life. Sure, sure. There's a lot of basic things that you just read and you can never stop learning. I yeah. think that from philosophy, I'm learning that you can never stop learning. That you've got to be, you, you're a lifetime learner and you, you have to constantly relearn things. And, yeah. Yeah. Big, big on learning now. So let me ask you this. Have you, are you a conceptual artist? Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> say I am. <laughs> well, you are now. Well, there we go. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the basic way to wrap this thing up here okay. is we've had our conversation. Now, generally, I say that these conversations have to be 45 minutes to an hour. We could do and that after this. I we know. Could talk. I'd be welcome. I, I would welcome it. Um, and what happens is we uh, we share water from this glass, okay. and you can start because uh, then you don't have to get my cooties. You know. Okay. No, uh, cool. I'll take a little sip. Great. And I'm going to drink some too. Okay. And then. We need to put a token of this conversation in this jar. So okay. I have manufactured these, these tokens nice. that we could use. And I'm going to give you one for your time. Okay. Uh, but do you have anything on you that you think would be representative of this conversation? Um, that I could throw in the jar? Yeah, it would have to stay up and you know, have to be able to preserve, be preserved in water. Uh, I might have a good old something. Call. Yeah, something that you, that you wouldn't. We wouldn't miss. I might get it back to you. Got a gift card that's used up. Oh, you, uh, who's it from? Uh, stepdad. Yeah. Yeah. Stepdad. What's his name? Can Shelton. I... Shelton okay. Brown. All right. You know what? This is uh, this. In recovery, there are things that happen where you can't explain them. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people talk about God. Some people talk about higher powers, and so on and so forth. I came today with this card. <laughs> Look at us. Okay. This card. <laughs> And I came with this car because the picture I showed of my father, mm -hmm. he died yesterday. And he's going to be buried uh, across this bridge in the Thousand Islands. And this is, this is how I get across that bridge. So I've had this in my drawer so I know I can get across that bridge for mm -hmm. his burial. And I'm going to put this in the jar with your stepfather's card. And we're going to sign and seal this jar. And we're going to have this jar as a memory for both of us of those men. Yes, sir. 
So what you need to do, I'm going to get you a pen here. OK. And we're going to sign this right here with okay. your name. And I'll put this jar in here. And I've already signed it. So what I'd like you to do is just fill that up all the way to the top and let it even spill out. Let the cup run it over. Perfect. And then put that right here. And then you seal it right here. All right. And then I'll seal it. And then this, you know what? I'm going to give this to you. So this is, this is the challenge with something like this. All right. What is it? It's a bond between me and you, for yeah. sure. And is it, it, you know, you can turn it into a jar. You can turn it. You can save it. But that's your burden when you, when you participate in conceptual art. Now, this is art or it's something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's really up to you. So oh, thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity of, of spirit to come down and, and talk with us. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry right. about your father, too. I know. Thank you.